Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. This video is the first video in a series where I'm going to talk about using generative design to create parts that are ready for three axis milling. One of my first impressions of generative design is that some of the organic shapes that it creates seem to be odd and unlike anything that our customers were making. And I somewhat questioned the likelihood of our customers applying this technology for that reason. However, I've grown to realize that when you set up the study, you're defining how you're going to be making it. And if you follow that set of criteria, creating your three axis milling programs are going to be fairly simple and fairly easy. Not in all cases, but in some. So I decided that I was going to go through the process of creating uh, a part or a generative design study that was going to be three axis milled and just to see how easily and how accurately I could create that part knowing the criteria I set up. So here is what I have. This is a part or an assembly that we've used in one of our classes for years. It's just like a little wall mount for an LCD monitor. I picked on one of the components of this one here, this arm. I figured that'd be a perfect scenario of something that I could create a gener generative design study on. So here is my completed design with the new generative design arm. And I want to kind of just go through the process of how I got to that point and also how to program that on a three axis mill. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my master assembly here and open up this part. So one of the first things I did is this part was one solid piece and I was looking at the design here and I was like, well, this would be preserve, this would be preserve, and actually this would make good sense as a starting shape. So all I really did here is I split this into three separate bodies using, uh, I created a work plane here and a work plane on this face and I split this into three separate solid bodies. Then I went to the Environments tab and I used Send to Fusion to send this part up to, to my Fusion 360 team. You can see I've already done that. I'm going to actually add an additional letter on the end here, just an A, so I can walk you through the process of setting up the study once I get this uploaded to the cloud. So I'm going to say Upload New File. It's going to go to the same location as everything else. We'll give that a, a moment and then I'll meet you over in Fusion. So here I am now in Fusion 360, and you can see here is the original one I uploaded, and here is the one I just uploaded. I'm going to save this untitled document and then insert that one into here. So I'm going to just call this Gen Design LCD Arm. And here is the one I just uploaded. I will then tell it to insert that one into my current design. And I'll say OK, and I'll close my, my data panel so I have more room to work. So what I have here, if I expand this out, you'll see I still have my three bodies that I have from splitting that into multiple entities, and that's great. A couple things that I'll need here, though, to actually represent the study is I do need to have some sort of obstacles between the arms to represent the links that these will connect into and make sure that the results don't jump into or start colliding with that space. So all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a sketch, create it on this face. I'll project in this edge right there and this edge over here. And then I'm actually going to slice my graphics so I can see things down to that plane a little bit better. And I'm going to make two rectangles. And I'm going to put a point at this midpoint with this one. That makes way that way I can match up the midpoints there and there. 
And then I'll do some collinear constraints to line these up. I'll make them equal. Make this two and a half. Let's make this, see what two and a half looks like. That looks pretty good. Oops, I must not have gotten all my equals on. There we go, that looks good. Finish my sketch. And I'll just extrude these profiles. that face underneath there make these new bodies and we'll be good I'm going to save this real quick so now we've got our model prepared for the generative design study in the next video we're going to look at defining the generative design study including the manufacturing methods that we plan on using. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.